Before COVID, many other diseases plagued our world, and they haven't simply gone away. In fact, the current pandemic has actually made many other epidemics even harder to treat and control. But there's good news on the horizon because recent breakthroughs are bringing us more immunity than we've ever had before to one of the world's oldest and deadliest infectious diseases. And that disease is malaria. Malaria affects over 200 million people and kills about half a million people every year. It's actually one of the world's leading causes of death for children under five, and it's been around for literal millennia, but we still don't really have a handle on it. Why is that? Well, malaria is caused by a parasite, a group of them, actually, called plasmodium. And these parasites are transmitted by some species of mosquitoes. So when an infected mosquito bites a human, the mosquito regurgitates some of the parasite into the human's bloodstream. So, ta-da! infection. From there, the parasites move to your liver, where they multiply and mature into the form that can move on to infect your red blood cells. And this is the point at which you might develop symptoms, things like fever, chills, headache, vomiting, muscle pain. And in severe cases, this can lead to trouble breathing, organ failure, and death. And the measures we currently have to combat this disease aren't really that great. Anti-malarial drugs can be really rough on your body, and we actually give them not only to treat the disease, but also to prevent it. One analysis found that these drugs may only be up to 72% effective at preventing malaria. And plus, the darn parasites keep developing resistance to many of these drugs. We also have tools that target the mosquitoes themselves instead of the parasite, like insect nets and bug spray, and these play a huge role in malaria prevention. But the availability of all of these tools is easily disrupted by things like civil unrest or the COVID-19 pandemic. So a more long-acting, more effective solution would be huge. A solution like a vaccine. But the thing is, there actually is no approved vaccine for any parasitic disease of any kind. See, when we make a vaccine, we're trying to get your body to protect itself by introducing it to the parts of the pathogen that would make you sick. That's what's called the antigen. So for COVID, that's the viral spike protein. But parasites are generally much more complex pathogens than bacteria or viruses. So their antigens are more complicated. But there are some options on the horizon. The most advanced candidate so far is called Muscirex. It actually has been approved by the European Medicines Agency and has passed through phase three trials, but it's not yet approved by the World Health Organization. It contains one of the parasite's main surface proteins as the antigen, and that's produced in a lab by inserting the DNA that codes for the antigen into a microbe, like a yeast. The microbe produces that antigen, we put it into the vaccine, and the antigen activates your immune system against the parasite. But this vaccine doesn't provide full protection. It's around 30 to 40% effective in some trials against malaria infection over the course of about four years, and that decreases over time. Another vaccine that works in a really similar way, called R21, has come onto the scene more recently and improved on the amount of protection, with some studies showing up to 77% effectiveness, but it's still in its early trial stages. The NIH recently tested another kind of vaccine, and this is a live attenuated type. That means it contains the whole live parasite, but it has been weakened by something, in this case by radiation, to make it so that it can't actually infect you. This candidate can provide 100% protection, but only against the exact same strain of parasite that's included in the vaccine because there are many species of plasmodium and within species there are different strains, this vaccine provides incomplete protection against strains that are different from the parasite included in the shot. And the newest member to join this cast of characters is one we're all used to hearing about these days because it's an mRNA vaccine. Using the same technology that's behind the Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna COVID vaccines, this malaria vaccine candidate contains mRNA that codes for the antigen, one of the parasite's surface proteins. So instead of having the actual protein itself in the vaccine, like the Muscirex and R21 candidates do, or having the whole live parasite in it, like that NIH vaccine, 
this vaccine contains just the mRNA, and your cells are what's making the protein. BioNTech recently tested this vaccine in mice, where it yielded 88% protection. And the company has its sights set on having the world's first mRNA vaccine for malaria available for use in humans by 2022. Now, all of these candidates do still face many hurdles, from having enough facilities to make each kind of vaccine to the logistics of getting them to the people who need them. And while none of them are licensed and on the market yet, we could be just a few years away from the world's first ever approved parasite vaccines, maybe letting us swat malaria away for good and changing the world forever. If you want more positive infectious disease news, then check out this video here. And for more buzz on all things vaccine, make sure you subscribe to Seeker. If you have another public health topic you want us to cover, then leave us a comment down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.